Good evening and welcome to Court TV Live. I'm Ted Rollins and uh, it is a sad night tonight uh, here at Court TV and across the country. We have lost one of the Supreme Court justices. Just within the last hour, it was announced that Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has passed away at the age of 87 years old. And uh, she was, of course, a fixture on the Supreme Court. Um, for many years, she had been suffering from cancer and she was in and out of the hospital several times this year. In fact, during the arguments, the oral arguments in the spring, she actually took part over the phone in a hospital uh, room. She was recently hospitalized and then released, but um, we are getting word tonight. So it is official uh, from the court saying that Ruth Gator Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died at the age of seven. I want to bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who has the um, the statement that was released uh, just moments ago by the court. It was, Ted, announcing that she passed away surrounded by friends and family. Of course, we know that she's been battling pancreatic cancer. That was the cause of her death, complications to the cancer that she's been in and out of the hospital for with that. She was 87 years old. Uh, Justice Ginsburg was appointed to the Supreme Court by President Clinton in 1993, and she was only the second woman appointed to the court, Ser served more than 27 years on the court. And she's survived by her two children, Jane Ginsburg James and uh, four grandchildren. It goes on to say that Chief Justice John Roberts said, quote, our nation has lost a jurist of the historic stature. We at the Supreme Court have lost a cherished colleague. Today we mourn, but with confidence that future generations will remember Ruth Bader Ginsburg as we knew her a tireless and resolute champion of justice, Ted. As you can imagine, this leaves a big hole up there on the Supreme Court. Absolutely, and um, across the country uh, for you know, uh, people that have followed her, followed the court. She's been such a fixture um, over the years. Pamela C. is a law professor at Florida Gulf Coast University. She joins us by phone. And uh, Pamela, I know you um, have studied the court for years. And uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, RBG as they call her, um, was such a fixture. This is a huge loss um, for just uh, the, the court itself and, and this country. The, the loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you cannot put into words. She is the voice of, the, the, of women, the voice of the liberal view. She is something that's going to be missed entirely. But even though she may have been a, a liberal voice, she listened. This is a, a, a woman who took her job so very seriously she listened to all sides, putting, putting aside her own personal feelings to make sure that she was doing the best thing for the, for the court and for the United States. She was a, a, a tremendous asset on the court. In fact, if you look back, one of, her, uh, one of her favorites on the court was Antonin Scalia. They were quite good friends. And you would think the two being from the two opposite ends of the spectrum, it would be uh, not expected. But yet those two made quite a team in terms of discussion and um, working towards good and great results. Um, she is she's going to be sorely missed. Somebody who dedicated her life, um, as all the justices have, but to, to the um, passion that she brought. Um, didn't matter what side you were on. If you're a hardcore conservative, you could respect um, Justice Ginsburg for the reasons you just articulated, her work ethic and her ability to listen, absorb the other side. Because when you listen to her argue, um, it wasn't coming from a, uh, without knowledge. I mean, she was able to argue her side and, and question people that were before the court in a manner that um, uh, was just brilliant, really, um, no matter where you sit on the political s spectrum. What, uh, uh, Give us a sense of the, you know, the, the, what she brought to the court. And, and um, when you look at the other justices, the, her personality seemed to, more so than others, really um, come out, like Scalia's did uh, on the other side. Oh, absolutely. She had a way of, of inserting herself into the discussion to make sure that it was... Um, it, it followed the important tones. It, in, it followed what was necessary to be learned from each of the parties. And she, too, was respectful of the people in front of her, 
But she was no slouch. She was not going to let you get away with anything. She expected people who appeared before her to know their know their cases inside and out, to know their law, and she expected great things from them. And she urged that forward through her questions and guiding them through their responses. So I think that 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 uh, uh, activity of hers on the court will certainly be missed. But even more than that, she is one who absolutely, you knew that this woman had done her homework, more so than just reading a case and reading the, the materials and, and knowing the briefs. She wanted to make sure she knew the parties. She knew what was going on. She could compare what had happened before. And she had a mind like a steel trap. She was going to find everything that related back and she could she could recite it for you she knew her she knew her job she knew her cases she knew the law and you whether you agreed with her and her her perspectives or if you disagreed you had to respect her for what she brought to the court we're going to talk about what is next um, for the court. Uh, Pamela, stay put, um, because one of the you know uh, things that, of course, the next question will be as well is, will she be replaced before the election coming up in November? I want to get your take on that. Um, but first, let's go back and take a look at her life. Here's Court TV anchor Julie Grant. So, my dear notorious RBG, <laughs> how does it feel to be a cultural and pop icon in your 80s. <laughs> she is one of the most notable faces of the women's rights movement, with more than a quarter century serving on the highest court in the land and a reputation for pointed dissenting opinions. She's earned the name Notorious RBG. No, 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 People ask me, what in the world do you have in common with the Notorious B.I.? <laughs> I said, it's evident. <laughs> that we were both born and bred in Brooklyn, New York. In 1954, Ruth Bader graduated first in her class at Cornell and married law student Martin Ginsburg. But within two years, this wife, mother, and Harvard Law student would face one of the greatest challenges yet when doctors diagnosed Marty with testicular cancer. He was first very sick, and then he would sleep until about midnight. He went back to bed about 2 in the morning, and that's when I hit the books myself. Marty recovered, but Ruth's pace never slowed. Despite graduating top of her class at Columbia Law, Ruth Ginsburg struggled to find a job, believing she had two strikes against her. She was Jewish and a woman. But the absolute killer was I had a four-year-old daughter when I graduated from law school. So if they would take a chance on a woman, uh, a mother was more than they were willing to risk. As a lawyer for the American Civil Liberties Union, Ruth Ginsburg took on cases that challenged the status quo, arguing six landmark sex discrimination cases in front of the high court. She was appointed to the U.S. Court of Appeals in 1980, where she served until 1993, when President Clinton nominated her for the Supreme Court. The Senate confirming Ginsburg 96 to 3, making her at the time only the second woman to serve in that position. She is just a very steady and strategic member of the Supreme Court, but these days she loses much more often than she wins in the big cases. In 2014, Justice Ginsburg was on the losing side in Burwell versus Hobby Lobby stores. The majority ruling the Religious Freedom Act allows for-profit companies to deny contraception coverage to employees based on religious exemption. In 2018, Justice Ginsburg found herself in the minority again in Gamble versus the United States, where the court upheld the separate sovereigns doctrine, allowing a person to be prosecuted for the same crime in both state and federal court. I've known her for almost 50 years. And what has struck me always is her extraordinary ability to keep her cool, not let anybody get her too much of a rise out of her, and deliver the goods when she needs to. 
Recently, Justice Ginsburg shared some advice that she says is the secret to success in her personal and professional life. It helps sometimes to be a little deaf. <laughs> and that good advice I have followed in every workplace, <laughs> including the good job I now have. And again, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, dead at the age of 87. Chanley Painter still with us along with Pamela C. Chanley, um, already there have been um, some uh, plans for a funeral memorial. What, what do you know? We know that there is going to be a private ceremony. It will be held at the Arlington National Cemetery, but there isn't quite a date yet. I'm sure there will be some public memorials as well be planned for this historic figure. What a loss for our country today. And we do know that she did pass away today in her home in Washington, D.C. So as the moments are passing by, Ted, we're learning more and more information from the court and from other uh, sources. Yeah, people are, are, are reacting. Hillary Clinton tweeting, Justice Ginsburg paved the way for so many women, including me. There will never be another like her. Um, thank you, RBG. Pamela C., um, I, I think the um, it, it, you know, watching that piece and you see her talking about um, the comparison between her and the rapper, um, you know, and her, and her nickname RBG, her sense of humor really um, was another big part of who she was. Uh, even though she didn't say much uh, outside the court, w when she did speak, um, she had the one-liners. She was just someone who attracted people uh, both on the, on the left and on the right. Oh, she did. And when you, when you learned about her and you heard of her and people that knew her, they all would say the same thing. She was this joy of life and, and just full of, full of energy and entertaining. She, she, was, uh, she had a terrific sense of humor. Um, obviously, you don't always get that from a judge when they're on the bench. But when you, for someone on the Supreme Court, you, and you don't always get to know them so well, and yet we did manage to get to know her better than many of the other justices that we've seen. And I think part of that is because of her, uh, her high profile before she became a justice and her active involvement as an advocate in, in many instances, certainly through women's rights and gender equality and, and so on. I, I think that was, that was very significant for her. And yet there she is. She, when you see pictures of her, smiling and happy and knowing that somewhere she's she's having a little chuckle to herself about some some joke somewhere she's very um uh, a, a good person that you would you would want to know um, agree with her or disagree with her you would want to know this person and i think that was that was something special for her as as a member of the the supreme court you don't always get that with some of the supreme court justices what is next now? Um, we are so close to an election. We had this basically play out during the end of the Obama administration where the Republicans did block the nomination of a Supreme Court justice um, until after the election. What do you think is going to happen in, in Washington? Um, right now, there should be, uh, the process should be starting for a replacement. Uh, will Democrats try to delay that in hopes that they win the election? Well, absolutely, they will. Um, I, I, there is precedent already for that. So when when um, Antonin Scalia passed away and we needed to replace him on the court, uh, Barack Obama made his nomination. Let's see, it would have been March, April, April, I think, um, before the November election. So that was many months before this time frame. And the, the nomination of, of, of uh, Merrick Garland was held up by the, by, the, uh, uh, by the Senate. So there is precedent for that kind of action to say, let's, no, let's not act hastily. Let's wait until the, the election is over and let's not make that part of the election process, which uh, does make sense to a certain extent. And here we have an election that's coming up in, in what, 47 days, just a, just a few days down the road. So the, the possibility of it being held up is, is quite, quite, uh, quite big. So um, I don't know that uh, there will be a possibility of it getting through a Senate, um, through a Senate vote. Um, you know, the, the president will certainly nominate. I, I think he's already put out a list that he has suggested. And I, I understand that um, 
there might be a list that had been prepared for the other for the can, other candidate for Joe Biden, um, that he has a list, but that has not been publicized. Um, but that that's the sort of thing that would that, that would cause uh, um, challenges for the election, um, and certainly challenges for the court. How does the court respond to that? Um, they will be in session starting the was the first uh, first Monday in October, so coming up in just a couple of weeks, and they're going to be short one person. And you know, when you're, you're getting started, um, you know, if there's, let's say they might have some votes that might come up before one is, one is nominated to, to the bench, um, that you could have four, four splits. There are sometimes five, four splits. Um, and without that fifth person, that, that fifth person on either one, one side or the other, you could have a tie theoretically. Um, I, I don't think the Supreme court would, um, probably allow that they might postpone something until such a time as as there could be um that that last person on the bench but but yeah it sh- there is precedent right now for a delay and more likely than not that's probably going to happen right and as you say in october there's going to be a um a, a void there a missing justice and a big one at that pamela stay put we're going to take a break we're still getting a, a lot more reaction coming in um from people remembering the life of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Again, she is dead at the age of 87. We'll have much more right after this. Stay with us.